time to wine and dine with me. I'm Jess, your pampered chef. Join me and let's bring it back to our tables. Let's get inspired and turn everyday ordinary into something really extraordinary. We can do this right here in our kitchens using the inspiration of the wonderful, high quality, and very fun products of The Pampered Chef. Hey there, it is episode two already of Wine and Dine with Jess, your Pampered Chef. Today I wanted to do like a really great Sunday family type of meal. So I decided to go ahead and show you a nice roasted chicken with vegetables. So many people have said that they get a little um, anxious about cooking a roasted chicken, a whole roast what? It's going to cook even better because the worse it looks, the better it cooks. This is stoneware, it's made out of natural clay and it seasons itself as you cook. So stay tuned, stick around, because afterwards I'm gonna go ahead and pair it with a really great wine that I think is really gonna take this whole meal up a notch or two. Okay, so I have a whole roasted chicken and this one is almost six pounds, it's about five and a half, a little over five and a half pounds. Most chickens you can get anywhere from five, four to six pounds for a roasted chicken. So you're gonna to wanna to pick up one of these bad boys here, um, take the wrapping off of course, give it a good rinse in the sink. Make sure that you go into the chicken and you see if there's any giblets. A lot of times there are and they're gonna be in a little bag. Make sure you take those out. That I think is the biggest novice cooking mistake of chicken is they leave the giblets in. So I'm telling you right now, reach inside that chicken and take out the giblets, okay? And then the rest is like smooth sailing. So what I did is I patted this dry. You always wanna take a paper towel and pat it dry. I like to stuff the cavity whenever possible. Um, so you can put anything in it that's aromatic. Uh, garlic is, is very popular to do, um, any herbs, rosemary. But you know what, I don't have rosemary today, so guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and just um, use some of the oregano that I have growing in my garden. I'm gonna put that in there um, along with some garlic and probably some lemon. So yeah, that sounds good. So you could just go ahead and put that all right in the cavity. So I have some garlic here, easy way. Just hit it with your knife and it's going to peel. It's going to um, kind of infuse the whole pot, right? It's called aromatics and it'll use all the food and just add extra flavor and also just make your house smell extra special while it's cooking. So while I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put the um, oregano right in here, okay? Make sure you wash your hands a lot. Now, I'm not touching anything that matters at this point that needs to stay clean, um, but you're dealing with raw poultry, so when you're done handling the chicken, make sure you wash your hands really well. I don't want anyone getting sick. So I do have lemon that I sliced up here. I'm just gonna put that right in there, see how easy that is. Next, what I'm gonna do is take some kitchen twine and these little legs right here. I'm gonna go ahead and just tie them together. Um, I'll do that off camera so we don't waste a lot of time watching me tie up chicken legs. Don't you agree? Yeah, probably a good idea. So stick around, I'll be right back. Thanks. Okay, so I said we're gonna do roasted chicken and vegetables, so it's time to get to the vegetable part. Our chicken is just hanging out here in these this glass bowl. These bowls come in a set of three. They're glass mixing bowls. You can find that on the website, um, which will be down below. If you are on my Facebook page, you can up top hit the Shop Now button and look at all the products and fun recipes. If you're on YouTube, you could find the um, link down below. Okay, so let's get on to the vegetables. I chose some little red potatoes. See, like these little guys? I have about probably six uh, six or seven small potatoes that I quartered if they were really big or if they were larger and then I halved the ones that were um, smaller. And then I took a couple of carrots, um, about four or five carrots. I do like to peel my carrots. It's just a, an easy way to also make sure they're clean too after rinsing them. A Pampered Chef has a fantastic peeler, so this is what I used. And you just take your carrot, very simple, and boom, voila. See that? Super simple. I use this for potatoes, carrots, cucumbers, anything that you need to peel. So that's this device right here. So I'm going to then whip out my Santoku knife. Remember this one from episode one? The best utensil you can have in your kitchen it is a great knife. It's a five inch Santoku knife, German um, heavy duty steel, forged cutlery. It has little rivets on it. And what that does is it creates air pockets to release the food that you're chopping um, a lot easier. So we're gonna go ahead and just chop it up. Um, this is like a rustic dish. So you know why you're gonna love roasted chicken? You can chop it up very thick. 
you don't have to like stress over it. This is like the kind of meal that you can just be a little sloppy with and get a little rustic. I like the word rustic. That means imperfect in my vocabulary. So I'm a rustic cooker. Anyway, so I'm gonna put that in there. I have a bowl right here. This is part of that three bowl mixing um, or three set mixing bowl. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, you'll see them on the website. They're beautiful bowls. Okay, so now I have a full onion right here. I chose a red onion. I like it with red onion, but you certainly can use um, a Vidalia onion if you want it a little bit sweeter. And I'm just gonna quarter this onion um, with my Santoku knife. See that? Gorgeous. Okay. Actually, these are a little big, so I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and eighth the, the uh, wedges so I get about eight um, good pieces. Okay, so you can just put that right in your bowl. And so we have all these beautiful vegetables and I have my deep covered baker. So what I'm gonna do is just um, spread a little bit of oil around the baker before I start putting um, these yummy ingredients in. So I just have a little bit of olive oil and the silicone brush right here. So this is fun because you kind of get to paint, right? You're painting, it's like painting pottery, literally, because this is clay. <laughs> so on how you look at it, people. Anyway, so we have that in. I'm gonna put a little bit of rustic, watch this, my hand's going. <laughs> and I'm gonna put a little bit of the vegetables towards the bottom here, or actually on the bottom. Um, so we have that going, that's good. Um, I'm not gonna go ahead and season them because watch what happens. This whole chicken, which I tied with the kitchen, with the, um, kitchen twine, is gonna go right in there. Ooh, look at that, gorgeous. I don't even know if I'm going to fit all. This is a big chicken. Usually I do about a four pounder. So anyways, so I have the chicken in there. Now it's time to season the chicken. So I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands and then I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. So now the chicken is in the deep covered baker. So I'm going to just go ahead and um, put some, baste some oil. This is olive oil right over the chicken, all over. You can even just kind of pour it out and I'm just trying to be fancy for you guys but like I said, I'm rustic, right? So let's just go ahead and kind of pour the oil on. And I would say this is probably like a good quarter cup or so of oil. So spread that on. Now it's time to season it. So what are we gonna season it with? Well, you know what? We're gonna go kind of basic. We're gonna go ahead with some kosher salt. Whenever you see me using salt, it is always kosher salt. It may sometimes be um, Himalayan or sea salt or a combination, um, but yeah, so either one of the two. But I will let you know if it's a Himalayan or sea salt, okay? So kosher salt, get it nice and, this is the flavoring, man. This is where all those juices are gonna come together with the spices and kind of drizzle the juices all over those vegetables. And it's gonna create magic once again. Okay, so here is some oregano. I like taking dried oregano and putting it all over my chicken. Okay, very good. And now some nice, crushed black pepper. So just get that right over your chicken. Ooh, that just looks good already and it's not even in the oven. Okay, so speaking of the oven, if you can see back there, I don't know if you can see my oven is set at 450 degrees. Um, we're gonna talk about that in a second, but make sure you preheat your oven, okay? So when I started this uh, video, I had already started to preheat my oven and I just heard the buzzard about a minute ago, so that means it's actually ready to go. Okay, so we have that in there. Now what I'm gonna do is I have some lemon. I squeezed about a whole lemon and I put it right in our silicone little cup. This comes in a set of three. This is the smallest one. They're microwave safe, um, dishwasher safe. And I like them because they're just nice for drizzling over and getting a more refined pour because you can squeeze them um, and it just makes for a better spout. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some lemon right on that chicken. Okay, did you see that? Pretty cool, huh? Okay, and at this point, this is a little trick that my mother taught me. She would always put a little butter underneath her turkey or her chicken, and it's a tradition that I've carried on. Um, I just think that you know, chicken breast especially gets a little drier at times, so I like to think it just kind of helps to keep it nice and moist and flavorful. So I'm picking up the skin that's right here, and this is, once again, rustic and messy. I'm just taking this butter, and I am ever so sweetly and nicely just putting it right underneath the skin, in between the skin and the meat of the breast meat. And it gets, <laughs> it gets a little uh, messy, but that's okay. Okay, so we have that in there. 
okay? All right, now I'm gonna go ahead, and now at this point it doesn't matter that I touch these vegetables because of the fact that they're gonna be cooking with this chicken anyways. So I'm gonna layer my veg the rest of my vegetables, my onions, um, potatoes, and carrots. If you don't like any of those, or you only like a couple of those, you could go ahead and use whatever. You could do celery, you could do uh, turnips, they're delicious because they kind of roast up. Um, so I just, you know, these are what I like and this is what my family eats, so that's why I chose these. Okay, so here we go. That's it, it's gonna go in the oven. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put it in the oven without the cover of the deep covered baker. I'm gonna put it straight in there with no cover for 30 minutes at 450 degrees, okay? What that's gonna do is start to brown the top of that skin. After a half hour, I'm gonna move it down to 350 degrees, and that I'm going to go ahead and cover it. So the last hour will be at 350 degrees, and it will be covered, okay, got it? First half hour, 450, uncovered. The last hour, it's going to be covered and moved down to 350 degrees. It's gonna make for a very tender, very moist, juicy chicken you're gonna fall in love. Okay, so I took my chicken out of the oven and I let it rest for about 10 minutes. When I took it out, I went ahead and um, checked the temperature of the chicken. So you wanna put the thermometer right in the thigh. I'll kind of show you here how that works. So the thigh is um, obviously the leg, right? So you're gonna put it right in the thigh because it's the meatiest part and you should always check the dark meat first. Um, try not to touch the bone um, to get a more accurate um, reading. So when I did that, I saw that I was just above 165, which is perfect for your chicken. You want about 165 um, to know that that chicken is cooked and ready to go. Okay, so you can let it sit just for a couple minutes, five to 10 minutes. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you something really fast though, because I can't resist. These are my old tongs. These tongs um, I would typically use to start taking out the vegetables. Um, I use them to grill a lot outside. The problem is, is that when I'm grilling or even inside, and I'm putting um, you know, my ingredients that I've cooked in like a bowl or a platter, I have to do this. I mean, that's not cool, right? You have to, you shouldn't have to bite your tongs. So I'm gonna show you these cool tongs from Pampered Chef. The tips of these tongs are heat resistant up to 600 degrees, so um, really anything. Um, they're not gonna melt or misshapen. So these are gravity tongs. So when I need them, they're ready to go. Do you see that? And then when I wanna close them up, isn't that the coolest thing you've ever seen? So no more chewing on my tongs or pulling it with my teeth. These are also another favorite gadget of okay, mine. So welcome back. I went ahead and sliced up the chicken. I plated it along with those awesome vegetables that it's like a one pot wonder. I swear that deep covered baker is amazing. Um, this is my son, Peyton. He's gonna go ahead and help me taste this dish. He's a little hungry and a little eager to try it. So anyways, um, I also wanna let you know, when I took that chicken out, there was like this amazing natural juice and gravy that's left in that deep covered baker, unlike any other vessel that you're going to use roasting a chicken, it's quite delicious. You can go ahead and spoon that juice right over your chicken after you slice it, it just adds extra richness and juiciness. Okay, anyways, I'm gonna pair it with a Viognier, okay, a Viognier, uh, the Northwest region of the United States makes wonderful Viognier's. So this is a nakedwines.com Viognier. It's by David Akiyoshi. And um, anyways, I, I chose this because it just has a really light crispness. Um, it's very consistent, but not too overbearing, but it has a nice creamy um, end and it has like a nice spice uh, follow through. So it really mixes well with that oregano as well. Um, so yeah, so go ahead and you can go to Binnie's. If you don't have a Binnie's, go to another liquor depot, depot and you can try Mary Hill. <laughs> Uh, Mary Hill is about 10 to $15 and it's quite nice as well. It's another Viognier and it's made in Washington State. So, all right, I think I need some wine. Okay. You're lucky you can have Oh, wine. that's delicious. You're lucky. Drink your water. Okay, so you ready to try this? Yes, I have water in your... <laughs> Let's try it. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, here's take the first bite. Okay. Is it nice and yeah. tender? Yeah. That's oh delicious. my god! That's delicious. Okay, how are the carrots? No, I don't need to try those. Oh my! Mm. Do you like this dish? Do you like? I those? love the chicken. I just didn't like? need to try that. I'm telling you, one pot wonder. Your kids love it. You get the whole family together, enjoy a nice Sunday meal, and um, yeah, some nice wine too. Okay, to chicken. top it all off. I'm more chicken. Are you gonna cheers me first? Cheers. To food, friends, and family. Cheers. Cheers, Eve. Live well. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye
best dish ever.